us off, I want to welcome our amazing, Greg. one of our amazing hosts. Are, are they both coming down? One of them's still serving. Greg, come in. Come in. I want to welcome our amazing host down who puts together a beautiful spread. Chef Chris Cavalli. Greg. We're going to make this very quick. We're just really glad to be part of Equality Florida. It's a machine that needs to be moved faster, and we're going to be behind the machine. Um, thank you very much for coming to our home. And I, as I told some of you, when we're here, ring the bell. There's usually food on the counter. Thank you all very much for coming. And Greg is the one who drives this machine. We're going to do our best to keep this brief, but as I was walking around, I got like overloaded with announcements, but they're all really important. So we're going to lightning round through that, talk a little bit about uh, the amazing success that, that uh, each of your support has made possible, and then we're going to close out with some thoughts from our newest co-chair, Marsha Fudd. Um, but okay, so a couple of quick... Uh, recognitions and announcements. First, I just want to um, honor and thank our steering committee. If you're on the Sarasota or Suncoast steering committee, raise your hand. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the Equality Florida Suncoast steering committee is what makes all the magic happen. We have a big gala talk coming up that Marsha's going to talk about, but this is the team that works year-round to make our work in uh, Sarasota and the Suncoast possible. I want to make sure that you all know about um, an event that the Democratic Club of Sarasota will be hosting for us on September 22nd at 6.30. Where is where are Mary and Joanne? Joanne and Mary, want to stand Yay. These are our new friends from the, uh, the Sarasota Democratic community, but they're hosting a sort of mixery luncheon, sort of speakeasy kind of thing that um, I'm going to be speaking at with Ken Sheelan, and all of the proceeds from that will be going to the Equality Florida Sarasota Gala. So thank you all for being here. September 22nd at 6.30. Where? Where? Where is it again? Thirteen fifty Main Street, downtown Sarasota. Okay. On the corner of Palm and Main, across from the Epicure, sixth floor. Yeah, and as it gets closer, we're going to send out an email to everybody on our list, so you'll have all the information you need for that. We have a special announcement today that we didn't think we were going to announce, but we're very excited about. Every year uh, at our gala, Equality Florida honors one or two, sometimes three, uh, people who have really, really put their lives and their energies and their resources and their money and their time into uh, the LGBT community uh, here. Uh, we honor folks who have just gone above and beyond, not only for Equality Florida, but for this entire community. And we are excited to announce that Ken and Marsha put their heads together and with some, some uh, scheming from staff to come up with our honoree this year. We're just going with one person this year. He's here in this room, and I want to tell you that our 2011 Voice for Equality Award recipient will be... Donald Kiki. Oh, Kiki. Oh, Kiki. Oh, Kiki. We, we literally just told him today, so that's that's real blush right there. Okay. Hey, about two hours, you know, an hour ago. <laughs> literally an hour ago. Um, so come to the gala and help us honor him in front of our entire community. Uh, the last recognition that I want to give before we we get into the gritty of this is some brand new friends that just came on board with Equality Florida. Um, the, the Brockman family, Suzanne Brockman and Ed Gaffney are here. Where are you all? Wave at me. Okay. You all may know them from their career. Suzanne is a very, very well accomplished author. Um, but they are also the producers of a movie, The Perfect Wedding, which was filmed right here in Sarasota, and which they are publishing, and we're very excited to have them come on. as wrote it. They wrote it too to come on as presenting sponsors for the Sarasota Gala, and uh, it's a it's a strong financial support. But they're ready to partner with us on a bunch of different things, and we're very excited to have them here in the room. And I also want to recognize Suzanne's parents, Lee and Fred Brockman, as well. Wave at us! Yeah. Okay. So um, many of you were at um, our last mixer that we had at Rena Ferradino's house, so I don't want to repeat too many of the things. Um, that we discussed there, but there are some really important things that need to be repeated, and there are some things happening in state since the last uh, since the last time we spoke. Um, first of all, I want to just start by giving you all a picture uh, of the state of the LGBT community right now. Um, I think everybody knows that in the 2010 election, uh, the politics of that election left us with a state that is, if it were at all possible, even more conservative than the state of Florida, the state government that we had. Uh, in 2009. 
We, we have an incredibly hostile environment in Tallahassee, and as the statewide LGBT civil rights organization, we wake up every single day, all eight of us on staff, and all of our volunteers, and all of our co-chairs all across the state, and we think about how we work in a climate uh, uh, like the one that Tallahassee is delivering to us. And yet still, even in this environment, we manage to carve out victories. Every single year since Equality Florida has been in existence, um, almost every single year, they have filed a piece of anti-gay legislation. They did not do it last year, but we believe that it's because they are likely to do it this year. But every single year, because of the support of people like you in rooms all across the state, like this, we have managed to kill every single piece of anti-gay legislation in Tallahassee for 13 years in a row. The big threat this year, I mean, there's all kinds of things that our public policy director, you know, wakes up in the middle of the night with sort of nightmares about what they might do next. Um, and so she's got all kinds of ideas, but the big threat is around adoption. You know, it was last year, after 33 years, that with our political work and the amazing, amazing legal work of the Florida American Civil Liberties Union, we managed to repeal the ban on gay and lesbian adoption here in Florida. It was a momentous victory, an important victory, and it is now a victory that we have to defend. The threat that we see coming is a constitutional amendment. The same forces who put Amendment 2 on the ballot, who, who, you know, actually it was Amendment 2 that brought so many of you all into our work that really pulled us down into Sarasota with David Phillips and Jim and Bart Coyle and so many of the people here. It was Amendment 2, uh, the architects of Amendment 2, who have started saying as soon as the ban on gay adoption was repealed that that, that was not okay, it would not be acceptable in Florida, and the way to deal with this would be to uh, skirt past the courts and go straight to the Constitution. We believe that they will try to do this through a ballot measure, and we believe that they could do it as early as 2012. So it's, it is our mission, the thing that keeps us up at night, is trying to figure out how they can do it through the legislature, and being ready and vigilant to block it in every single committee that it comes up. We think they've passed the point of being able to do it through petition collection, that that is an important benchmark that we need to note since the last time we spoke. It, is very, it will be very hard for them to go around and collect the petitions, the over a million petitions needed to get this on the ballot for 2012. So that's an important moment to mark, but it means that the 2012 legislative session will be that much more intense, because that is the conduit, that is the way that they can do it. And with this legislature, with super majorities from conservative Republicans in Tallahassee, and with a governor like Rick Scott who has said bad things about adoption but not done a lot to actually attack it, we have to be vigilant. So that's the bad news. <laughs> Here's the good news. Even as we, even as we fight uh, in Tallahassee, even as we, we do everything we can to block these awful pieces of legislation, we still see the culture in, in Florida changing. And what we see is that it's happening at the local level. That in every major community in this state, we can find not just gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people who are willing to finally stand up and say, I will not live in a community that is ready to fire somebody because they're gay, that's ready to fire somebody because they put a picture of their partner on their desk, or kick somebody out of a hotel room because they hold their partner's hand as they walk in. This is not the kind of community that I want. It's not just that we see LGBT people calling for that. It's that we see more and more straight people are stepping up to say, this is not the kind of community that I want to live in. And if you look around this room, you can see that. So more and more, we are carving out victories at the local level. And there's one quick story that I want to tell. I, just for a quick snapshot of the number, since Equality Florida has been in existence in the last 13 years, we have managed to move the dial on local policies protecting LG, the LGBT community in so many important ways. Now over 10 million people in Florida are protected by local law from um, anti-gay discrimination. They're protected in employment and in housing and in public accommodations. And there are still so many other communities that need this momentum. In the last year alone, Orange County, Volusia County, Leon County, all passed human rights ordinances that protect gay and transgender people. Almost two million, two million people in Florida in the last year alone have gained these protections at the local level. And one example of the amazing viral organic way that this is happening is the city of St. Cloud. In 2010, the city of Kissimmee, because we had a, an openly gay city commissioner who did not get voted in because she had some gay following, she was just really smart and capable and people liked her, um, came to us and said, I've never done anything gay on the city commission in Kissimmee, which by the way is in Osceola County. Many of you have probably never driven through it, but it, is, it, is, it used to be rural Florida, it's just becoming urban Florida. 
Um, but in, in 2000, in early 2010, Cheryl Grebe, with our help, passed domestic partnership benefits for city employees in the city of Kissimmee. It was the very first piece of pro-gay policy, pro-gay law in Osceola County's history. I got a call from Cheryl yesterday, or last week, right, Friday, right. Friday we talked about it, on Friday, saying that she got a call from a Republican city commissioner in the city of St. Cloud, which is the sister city of Kissimmee, St. Cloud, Florida, the place where the Klan has been known to walk down the street in full daylight marching, where the Coffee Cup Cafe with 3K still exists on 192. A city commissioner, a Republican city commissioner of the city of St. Cloud said, Cheryl, we saw that you did this a year ago. We've been getting calls from our employees. We're ready to do this too, and we need your help to do it. We're voting today. <laughs> <laughs> domestic, partnership benefits, domestic partnership benefit policy in the city of St. Cloud, which will affect straight couples and gay couples who work for the city, passed its first reading in the city of St. Cloud on Friday. It is, it, it's one of those moments where, like, my partner's from St. Cloud, all right? He grew up there in a trailer park. It's, it's farms and trailer parks and the Klan, okay? That's, that's St. Cloud. And yet, in an environment where I didn't even think gay people were willing to call their city commissioners, we just got one step closer to passing a pro-LGBT policy. And it says something about the viral nature of the work that we're doing. No one ever would have thought two years ago that we were going to see something like that happen in Kissimmee. But because, because Orlando did it two years before, Kissimmee was ready to do it a year later. And then St. Cloud was ready to do it a year later. We don't even know the real impact that we're having on this culture, on the environment, and on, on, on the communities in which we do work. If we are able to pass a human rights ordinance here in Sarasota County, if we are able to get unincorporated Sarasota County to say, no transgender person will ever be denied service in a public space here. What does that mean for Charlotte County? What does it mean for Fort Myers? What does it mean for Naples? St. Cloud says that it means a lot. So your support here, I won't go on forever, but your support here at the local level, and I, that's, my, that's my signal, I said stand next to me, I'm going to Your support here, your support for our gala, the, the strength of this gala, our ability to get into these communities, to organize on the ground, to support local leadership, has a transformational effect that is not quantifiable with maps and with policy charts. It is changing minds, it is changing hearts, and it's pulling people like Suzanne and Ed, who are were sort of on the periphery of Equality Florida, but they were excited about what they saw happening here. It pulls people like them and people like you into our work, and it makes us stronger as an organization, but it makes us stronger as a community, and it changes the state. Florida will have anti-discrimination protection statewide. Walton County, will be protected because of the work that we do here in Sarasota. So keep engaging with us, be a part of our work, support our gala, Marshall will tell you about it. But thank you for what you do, and thank you for what you will continue to do, I know. Thank you. What he said. <laughs> um, as he said, uh, my name is Marshall Foote, and I'm co-chairing with Ken Sheelan, the 2011 Suncoast Equality Florida Gala, which is going to be October 1st at the University Club, which is on the top floor of the Bank of America building. You do not have to walk. There are <laughs> elevators. There's going to be parking. There's going to be great food, and it's going to be a fabulous night. Um, tonight, we are looking to... Uh, oh, by the way, Ken couldn't be here tonight because he's on vacation, but I did talk to him today, and he was crazy for the fact that we got almost 50 people into this uh, sponsorship reception tonight, which is really something. It's, it's a great tribute to uh, the work that Equality Florida does. And after listening to, to Joe, I don't know about you, but I believe. I believe in what they are doing. And I believe that you wouldn't be here if you didn't believe, and that you know that what they do costs money. So, our steering committee, and again, people on the steering committee, if you could raise your hands, we are working tirelessly to get to the gala and on events like this to help get to the gala. And our goal that we have set for Sarasota's gala this year is $60,000. And this is doable. When we have people like Suzanne and Ed coming in and making donations uh, at the level that they've come in, may I say? Sure. They're on the $10,000 level. There are <laughs> There are other people in this room who are also in uh, the, uh, the, the uh, gold 
platinum and silver levels. Um, the sponsorship levels are important. They're particularly important to get your pledge in tonight. And the reason why that is, is because the deadline to get names on all of the printed material for the gala and connected to the email communications that go out is Wednesday, as in the day after tomorrow. So we're looking for your sponsorship commitment tonight, your pledge. You don't have to write your checks tonight. It's okay if you do. <laughs> the table's set up in the dining room for that. But what we need is your pledge so we can get your names on this material. Because I believe that when we're looking for more supporters, when they see a long list of names and they see names of people that they recognize, it works. It brings in other supporters. And that's what we need to reach our $60,000 goal is more supporters. Um, on whatever level, but sponsorship level being great. Sponsorship levels begin at 500, they go to 1200, then they go to gold, silver, and platinum, which are 2500, 5000, and 10,000 respectively. Any sponsorship donation, 1200 and above, includes membership in the Florida Council, which <coughs> Joe can explain a little bit more what that means, but it's uh, it's cool. <laughs> you get to wear one of these. Um, so, I guess what I'm saying tonight is, please take the opportunity to enjoy the party, which Chris and Greg, this is a fabulous party. I lost them. <laughs> this kind of event is so energizing and uh, keeps people giving and, was that the wind it up, Brian? No. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, um, I believe that getting your names out there is important. And to get your names out there, we need the pledge tonight. Or by Wednesday, but it would be so easy to get you from the potential sponsor to the sponsor list. Off that, let's pester them list and on to the they're already settled list, so we can start pestering other people. Um, how did I do with that one, David? Yeah, it's okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Heard that. Um, okay, so that's it. That's all I have to say. If there are any questions, Joe is here, steering committee members are here, Michael Farmer's here. He's very well informed. He was the young man at the front desk. Young man, huh? Um, <laughs> and I also wanted to. Uh, yeah, I also wanted to point out just a shout out to Northern Trust for being here. Yes. We have Hosting, did you already mention their no, hosting? No, no, good idea. The sponsor's reception. The sponsor's reception on September 29th, and that's at the Northern Trust Building. And I saw the email about what's happening that night, and I'm going to be there. It sounds fabulous. It's great. It's for sponsors. It's for you. It's another mixer. We'll get charged up before the event. And I think I'm done. Am I done, Joe? I think you are. I am. You're Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Give the promotion one more time, Raina. All right, there's so much food, and I know there's still booze, so eat and drink and be merry, Joe. I'm talking to you. Thank you all again.